Hello, my name is Aaron, and for my dissertation, under the guidance of Steve Pettifer, I developed a ray traced voxel rendering engine called Voxel in Rust. Let's get started. Using voxels requires an effective method for their representation. The simplest form is a 3D matrix or grid, but this traditional approach is limited by significant memory demands dictated by the scene's bounding box. My research introduced me to a highly efficient data structure created at DreamWorks in 2013, known as the Volumetric Dynamic B tree, or VDB. In a VDB, 3D grids are structured as nodes within a tree. These nodes can either hold pointers to their children, as shown by the blue cube, or they can store tile values, which are uniform values covering all the points within that node, depicted here in orange. Each node in a VDB may lead to child nodes varying in grid dimensions, repeating this structural pattern throughout the tree. An essential characteristic of VDBs is the consistency in grid dimension at le each level in the tree. For instance, all descendants of the blue node maintain the same structure as the magenta node, and similarly, all the descendants of the cyan node follow the blue node's structure. Descending further down the tree, we encounter leaf nodes, shown in magenta. These represent the final level in the tree, and store voxel data directly. VDBs feature a fixed depth, typically comprising of only a few layers that always culminate in leaf nodes. This design results in a shallow but wide tree architecture, ensuring rapid voxel access as only a few nodes need traversal. Furthermore, VDBs preserve some grid-like benefits, such as in-memory spatial coherency. Expanding our view, a final noteworthy aspect of VDBs is their top layer indexing via root nodes using a hash map. This method allows for the placement of top-level nodes at any coordinate, efficiently managing the potentially vast empty space between them. Now, let's see how we get these voxels from the program memory onto the screen. During rendering, rays are cast from the camera through the pixel centers and into the scene. When these rays intersect with an object, the material of the object influences the pixel's color. This process is primarily conducted in compute shaders, where calculations are distributed among wargroups on the GPU. Wargroups can be thought as spatial-aware units of compute. After all the rays are cast, the resulting image is formed on an output texture, which is then projected onto the screen as you can see here, though usually the resolution is much higher. The most important part of this process has already happened, the casting of the ray, so let's look at some ways to cast rays. We can clear the scene, move into two dimensions to make things easier, and make our cow more compact. The most straightforward method of casting rays is called ray marching. This involves advancing the ray in fixed increments and checking each position for an object. However, this can be inefficient as small steps are needed to avoid missing any details. A more efficient method is the Digital Differential Analyzer, or DDA. This algorithm is tailored for discrete grids. It works by advancing the ray from one grid intersection to the next, efficiently checking each voxel for potential collisions. While effective, it still faces limitations in larger scenes where it can take a lot of steps for a ray to get out of bounds. Next, we have our sign distance fields. These work by using empty voxels to store distance information about the nearest non-empty voxel. This allows the ray to skip over empty voxels when it isn't too close to non-empty voxels. And finally, we take a look at the hierarchical DDA, or HDDA. This is a method of casting rays on sparse grids, effectively skipping areas with no detail. In this animation, HDDA on an octree is shown because they have much simpler topology than VDBs and are easier to visualize. But the same principle applies, the ray traverses at different levels in the tree depending on its topology. In the voxel rendering engine, HDDA was combined with SDF into a very efficient ray casting algorithm termed HDDA plus SDF. With a ray casting algorithm complete, we can now see the shape of our VDB model. It is time to extend these algorithms to ray tracing. Voxel has dynamic lighting and glossy materials, so shadows and reflections. Shadows are produced by casting a secondary shadow ray towards the light source. If this ray reaches the object without obstruction, the object is illuminated, otherwise it remains in shadow. 
To determine an object's color, we use a reflection model based on the Lambertian reflectance formula, focusing on two key components, ambient and diffuse light. Ambient light, the general illumination from the environment, is calculated through element-wise multiplication of the surface color with the ambient light color multiplied by an ambient light reflectance coefficient. Diffuse light, which originates directly from the light source, affects surfaces according to their orientation relative to the light. This light is computed by multiplying the surface and light colors, combined with the dot product of the light direction and the surface normal, then scaled by a diffuse light reflectance coefficient. When the object is shadowed, it receives no diffuse light, thus its color is solely determined by the ambient light. By adjusting the light source to directly illuminate our cow, the resulting color is the sum of the ambient and diffuse lights. Now, let's explore how this lighting model is implemented within the engine. We can alter the orientation of the sunlight and observe the formation of hard shadows. We can also change the color and intensity of the light. Moving on to reflections, they are managed by ensuring the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection relative to the surface normal. Using a bit of mathematics, we derive the reflected ray vector from the incident vector and the surface normal. This reflected ray is then cast from the point of intersection in the calculated direction. Subsequently, we bend the material's intrinsic color with the color returned by the reflected ray, influenced by a material-specific reflectance coefficient. This reflection process is recursive, so the color of the reflected ray might itself be determined by future reflections. These algorithms form the core of the rendering engine. Let's now take a look at some of the results and further explore the engine's capabilities. All of these recordings are captured inside the engine, not using some external tool. This was done because using tools like OBS would cause the frame rate to drop considerably, making it harder to capture the performance of the engine. Here, we see a glossy material on the ISS, notice the reflections on the solar panels. The outer bounds are colored to allow us to figure out what face is being reflected. Now going back to the fuse material, the ISS is a huge model, it spans over 8 trillion voxels. This next render mode shows how many steps a ray had to take to intersect a voxel or to go out of bounds. This RGB and upcoming gray modes are the first I implemented, they only do ray casting. Here we have some more dynamic lighting. This mode highlights voxels on the VDB node boundaries. Top level nodes are blue, internal nodes are red, and leaf nodes are light blue. And finally, here's a performance comparison between HDDA and the custom HDDA plus SDF. Thank you for watching, I hope this video gave you some insight into the inner workings of rendering engines.